device closure of the patent ductus arteriosus can be approached both from the arterial side and the venous side. Several variations of the method exist in literature. One method which was followed by us is described here. Initially an angiogram, descending aortogram is taken to confirm the size of the PDA to choose the size of the device. This angiogram shows pigtail catheter in the descending aorta and the contrast passing from descending aorta to pulmonary artery through the PDA. The PDA is superimposed on the tracheal air column in this view. A guide wire is introduced into the femoral vein and guided through the inferior vena cava into right atrium. From right atrium it passes into the pulmonary artery through the right ventricle. From the pulmonary artery the guide wire is passed into the descending aorta across the PDA. A long sheath is threaded over the guide wire. Then the PDA device is loaded underwater and introduced into the sheath. Underwater loading is needed to avoid air bubbles being trapped in the system and subsequent air embolism. The device is pushed out of the sheath in the iota and the assembly is withdrawn so that the device is deployed in the PDA. Fluoroscopic image showing the PDA device deployed in the ductus. Delivery cable is still attached to the device. The long venous sheath and pigtail catheter in the descending iota are also seen. Once the position of the device is fine and the shunt obliterated, the delivery cable is unscrewed and the device released. Delivery cable and sheath are withdrawn as well as the pigtail catheter. Hemostasis is achieved by compression over the puncture site. Follow-up echocardiograms are obtained to document the absence of residual flow. Occasionally, the PDA device can get dislodged into the iota requiring snaring out of the device. In some situations, the device has been retrieved by using the delivery cable itself and screwing it in position to the device followed by retrieval into the sheath. It is rather challenging to screw it back when the device is in a floating position in a distal vessel. Proper device sizing is important in preventing residual shunts after device delivery. Small residual shunts with a high velocity jet can cause hemolysis resulting in anemia, hemoglobinuria and in rare cases acute kidney injury. Device closure in pediatric patients through femoral artery by guidance with transthoracic echocardiography without radiation and contrast has been reported by Sangai A and Associates. The procedures were done in the surgical operating room with basic anesthesia. All the 32 cases were successful with a mean time of 35.6 minutes. They had used ventricular septal defect occluder using the femoral arterial approach. Mean device diameter was 4.8 millimeters.